So next we're going to uh, do a little mini mix down. Essentially, the reason for it is so I want to move on into the arrangement shortly. Now, what I've found over the years of making music is that if I go into the arrangement and, and the I'm bored of it or it doesn't sound very nice, um, I get sick of the track quicker and I found I wasn't finishing music as much. So if you're not finishing much music, try doing this trick. What I do is a mini mix down to get it all gelled and sounding nice together. Some of the levels now have left it for a few days and come back. Some of the levels are a bit out. So what I do is just scan through each and every individual track and we use a bit of EQ um, and, and just change the volumes of each individual track just to get them all sounding nice. Now I work from the bottom upwards so I start with the kick and the bass and then I'll move into any percussion or any 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 percussion or anything in the mid range as we spoke about the EQ the mid the middle of the EQ mix that in and then we'll move on to the move on to the highs afterwards so the hats and things so let's do that start with the kick the kicks at 0 dB here that's how it should be um, so let's solo the kick first and this kicks okay I don't really need to do much to that but moving on to the bass So the kick's always the loudest part of the track. We want to make sure that the bass isn't isn't as loud as the kick, but we want to make sure that it's it, you can still hear it poking through. So moving on, let's get the clap. Okay, and now what I want to do is take an EQ to each channel, apart from the kick and the bass. Oh, so drag it onto this kick clap channel here now. Oh, wrong EQ. I want to do the EQ8 so we've got we can see what we're doing. So I drag it onto the clap channel. Now I'm gonna do something called a high pass filter, and what that looks like is this. So essentially, anything on the left hand side of this, you won't be able to hear. Anything on this side, you can hear. So what I'm gonna do is if I play this clap now, you can see it's got all these frequencies down here that aren't needed so what I'm going to do is bring the frequency up and wait until I hear a change in the sound there and now bring it back slightly now all the frequencies that were here they were we can't really hear them but if you took this song to a club to play out the subwoofers are looking around here for any sub frequencies and what the subwoofers will do is they will they will boost them frequencies that's what gives it you the, the impact in the club now you can imagine if every single individual track has a load of noise here you'll get this real rumble like low end rumble in the club and it won't sound clean and it won't sound um, it just won't translate well when you take it to a club, so make sure you start getting these out. Now, all I can do is I'll just scan through quickly each of the tracks again. So we've done the kick, the clap, and I'm just holding command on my keyboard to to um, solo these together. So next thing is let's do the snare. So hold command, click the solo, and let's try that. Bring in an EQ. As you can see, all these frequencies down here are not needed so let's get rid of them there we go perfect moving on just check the volume if that's okay okay perfect my mouse is playing up today there we go so let's start doing some of the percussion here now. Let's try this. Let's pull the EQ on. So as you can see, there's just a little bit of low end here. We'll get that out. I'm 
placing the high pass filter just above 100 hertz down here as I, as I say these anything below 100 hertz they're your kind of club subby frequencies so we don't really need anything really below 100 hertz other than the kick and the bass that's where the kick and the bass live they're the only things that live there so now let's try this texture so let's just have a quick look into this okay so i can see that this has been EQ'd. it's probably yeah i've done it before you can see i've got i've got an eq on this channel before so i don't really need to do anything with that moving on what else have we got so we've got a synth texture let's try that so we've already EQ'd it here, but let's just check that the phaser isn't putting in any extra frequencies. We've actually got another EQ, EQ here. This is a, an EQ to this filter, so um, I shouldn't have to do anything there. That's absolutely fine. Now we can start getting into the hats and synths. So I think maybe try the synths first. And the pad, and what I noticed earlier was the pad was pretty loud, so let's go for that. Now I'm going to have a quick look at the pad on an EQ and see if we've got any rubbish frequencies in there. Yeah we do, so let's get rid of that. Just so we can hear it right away, let's just put it. So I want to go to whichever synth is lead first. So let's let's find out which one that was. That one. Okay, so I'm I'm guessing that these probably have quite a lot. So. What I could do is I could just put a an EQ on this synth channel at the top because anything that I put here will affect every single synth down here. But I've got to be careful with that because some, some sounds will have more low end and some sounds will sit down here, some sounds will sit up here. So I don't want to do that. I want to actually go through the individual channels. So let's go and find some. So let's get rid of that. Moving on to the next synth. Open up my loop bar. Okay, go and get an EQ for this. Start bringing that back. So we're just getting it out of the way of the kick and the bass down there, giving the kick and the bass some space to, 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 to move. Essentially, if you imagine this box here, this is the full track, and you can only fit a certain amount of frequencies within this box. It can't take infinite amount of frequencies. If you if you have infinite amount of frequencies and loads of different elements all hitting at the same time, this box is just going to be full. Now, the way to make this box give give things room is by EQing or moving things left and right into the left ear or the right ear but for now we're just using the EQ and we'll come on to the left and right later it's just worth remembering always remember you can only fit a certain amount in here and that's what a mix down is essentially going in here and and, and moving things around so that nothing is clashing but that's a separate thing altogether a mix down what we're doing is just a, a mini mix down really um, we do a proper one at the end. So I'll turn this one on. Bass synth, though, I'm guessing because it's a bass synth, it's likely to have a lot of low end in it. Okay. So this one's slightly different because it is bassy, but we don't. 
kind of just want the tone of the bass. We don't actually want the bass frequencies because we've written our bass up here. So let's let's make this into a high pass like so and just take it up until we hear it change. <laughs> Let's do this stab here. All these tiny subtle differences will make a massive difference at the end. So um, it's worth just doing this now. It saves us getting bored of the chat. I just want to try one thing on these synths. Um, there's something called OTT, and what that is is it's a multi-band compressor. Um, I don't want to get caught down in what exactly it is doing in this course, but I want to show you what it does. Now, with an OTT, it boosts it boosts the sounds essentially, and it will nearly always make the sounds louder. Um, but it will also pick up any bad sounds within these synths. So we've done all the mixing now, we just need to do the hats. So I'll do that quickly and then show you the, the compressor. So let's do the close hat first. Finally, the open hat. So, if your EQ hats too heavily, it can make them go a little bit strange sounding like so now we definitely don't want that so we still want to keep some of the impact of the hat so i'm gonna eq it just to halfway up the mid range here we still want some of that that mid range otherwise it will have no no attack on the front it won't it won't give any impact so. Okay, the only thing that's sticking out for me, because what I'm looking for now is the volumes of everything. The only thing that's sticking out for me is that is the te some of the texture. I'm not sure which one. It's not this. It's not that. It's not that. I think it's this one. So we need to be able to hear it, but for me, it's just a bit much in this track. I'm going to try shortening it using the decay. Now we can hear that bass line coming through much more. Perfect. Let's just hear that all the way through. Okay, nice. Moving on, I said I would show you OTT. So let's grab OTT and try it on this 
um, Sims channel. Now, straight away, as soon as it lands on this channel, it's going to boost everything. So I'll keep playing it and then put it on. Let me show you before. So they go very distant when it's like that. It almost sounds like they're a bit EQ'd at the, at the very top. So as soon as I turn this on, so let's hear it with the chat. And that's what I mean, it's, it's pulling out some of the horrible frequencies as well. So I'm going to use this in something called parallel. Essentially what parallel is, it is it's using an effect but only by 50%. Now, why it's called parallel is because if you're using it at 50%, you've got half the original and half the processed so um, sound. So let's just see if that gives us a nice effect now. <laughs> And now I'm just going to pick out the sounds that it is, it's picking up that are nasty. That one's okay. That one's okay. Okay, so it does a slight click at the start of, I think maybe this bass, or I, in fact, I don't know which one it is. It's this one. Let's hear this one. That. So, the way to overcome that is I do want it sharp and snappy, however, I'm going to bring this fade up a little bit so it, it should give less impact on the front, like that. If you hear this one that I have not just done that to, it's got like a click, but this, however, just eases up. So, let's see how it sounds now. Now I'm noticing just that one of them's too heavily reverbed. Let's see, is it this one? Yeah, this. So I've not actually used any of my own reverb on this channel. It's the tail. When this sample was made, it already had a lot of reverb on. So what I'm going to try and do and see if I can. Oh, See if I can make my own reverb that sounds nicer. If not, we won't worry about it. Okay. So that's what it sounds like now. Let's put our reverb on. Did we use reverb in any of these other channels? Let me see. I'm just checking whether I've already explained it. No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. So I must not have explained it yet. So reverb, what a reverb does is emulates different sized rooms. So a reverb can be, um, imagine if you go into a big massive cathedral or church or just any really large building, maybe a cave, somewhere like that, and you hit a drum, it's going to really reflect off the walls and you're going to get that echoed kind of effect. That is what reverb is. It's essentially emulating different size rooms. So when you get loads of different samples from a sample pack like I have and chop them all up and make your own, your own sounds out of them, all of these sounds have been made using different size rooms, essentially. Um, that's the way to imagine it. Um, it doesn't quite make sense but because they're made in a PC, but they're, they're made to sound like they're in different sound rooms, size rooms. Now, we can use reverb to... Put them all in one room so if i were to apply a reverb on this master synth channel up here for example where it affects every sound in it it will glue all the sounds together now let me just talk about the settings a little bit i always turn the pre-delay down we don't need to worry about that now the decay time there's only two settings that are really changing here the decay time and the dry wet we know what dry wet is so we can leave that but the decay time essentially is the size of the room so on this synth one here because i've chopped it up now let me turn the reverb off it's too harsh and too sudden we wanted to make it much nicer than that so let's turn the reverb on and give it give it some give it some size basically give put it in a big room like that 
Now, it will either work or sound terrible, I'm not sure yet. So, I have now taken the reverb tail off it, but it's just a bit too much, so I'm gonna do that and then fade it out slightly. Right, but now what we've done is we've took back control of that sound, so instead of every time it giving it all this tail and using a reverb that someone else has used, I can now control what size that room's in, that, what size room that synth is in. So let me bring the decay time right down. Gives us that effect if I turn the decay time up. Gives us that real massive room. So I can take back control of this synth now. Let's... Perfect. I'm just going to do the same with the rest of them now as well. Doesn't matter if this bit's absolutely perfect. So all things we can change later. So let's hear that now and then let's see what size room we want to put it in. Okay, so God, it's this synth. I'm really not enjoying that synth now, so I'm going to turn it off. We'll try it with some reverb in a minute, but we'll turn it off for now. So that's working for me. If I try it without the OTT now, you can see it makes a real difference. So. The final thing I want to do on here in this kind of mini mix dial is on this synth channel. Um, in fact, it's not the final thing; it's the second, second to last thing. So, I just want to put some processing on this channel um, as it affects all of the sounds at the same time. If I affect all of the sounds at the same time, it, it ties them together and makes them feel feel glued together. Um, I guess that's the only way you can explain it. it. It makes them feel like they're as one. Now, it may make more sense if I do that using the percussion rather than synths, because I'm quite happy with the synths now. Um, as you can hear, it's quite trial and error, this bit. Um, it's just trying to get the sounds all, all nice. So I'm gonna take the per percussion, and I'm gonna, and the texture, and I'm gonna link it all together. So the perk, the, I don't want the texture loop in here. Oh. I don't want the texture to loop in here, so I'll take that loop out. But I'm just holding Command on my keyboard and clicking things. So synth texture, we want that. Sometimes I'll put the clap in there, so we'll try it first. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then the open hats and the closed hats, they can stay out of this. So right click, group tracks, rename this perk. Now for organization purposes, I usually will color all of this as one. So the way to do that is I colour the top group first, I right click and assign track colour to groups, track, tracks and clips. There we go. And we know that this is our percussion. Really easy now. I'll also usually colour code the hats as one so we know what they are. Oh, yeah, there we go. Perfect, so we know what colour they are now and so on and so forth. Synths. Let's colour them in pink. There we go. Just makes it easier when we come to arrange it in a second. So let's hear the percussion together. And it's not sounding too bad, but let's try adding some reverb. Obviously that's well too much. So we'll bring the dry wet down and then bring the decay right down to. That is super subtle, but 
If I turn it off now, you can tell they're all completely separate elements. If I turn it on, it sounds like they're they're meant to be together. Just it's just like a bit of glue. And talking about glue. Some elements are quieter than others, some elements are louder than others. I just want to take some of that out. There's, the difference between the quietest part of sound and the loudest part is called the dynamic range. Now, I'm going to use a compressor, compressor? compressor to squash the dynamic range. So basically, kind of remove the dynamic range so everything is at one volume. Then once it is at one volume, we bring it all the way up together. So let's go and get a glue compressor drag it onto the channel. Now I'm going to bring the threshold back until I start seeing the needle move and it's probably best to do this before the before the reverb. So this at the when you've got lots of effects at the bottom here it goes in from the left hand side first it goes through the compressor and then it goes through the reverb. So if I were to do this it would also compress the, the, the reverb tail and we don't want to do that. So let's go back to the start and let's start bringing this threshold down until we see some some compression happening. Now I don't want too much of this, I just want it to be a little bit, just take some of the dynamic range out so it all sounds as one as I keep saying. And then I can bring that up back up together using the makeup gain because we've squashed some of the volume out of it. So if I, I want to do this though, listening to it with the track because I don't know how loud I need it without actually knowing what the track sounds like. So. These subtle differences make a massive difference to the overall track. It just brings it to life slightly. Okay. Perfect, so that's it for the mini mix down. Now we start getting into the arrangement next session. So, thank you.